Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this episode, but uh, we're going to talk about video games. We're going to talk about old video games again. Did a video yesterday talking about how players are playing older games on Steam. They're going back to the old classics, games that are 10 years old. And now there's an article floating around that Gen Z is embracing retro gaming. So even Gen Z, which these AAA developers are trying to appeal to, are going back to older games. Because if you're younger and you've never played older video games, I mean, there are decades worth of games. There are more games out there than any one person can play in a lifetime. And, you know, I, I think it's fantastic that younger players are discovering these games for the first time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting though, and I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but let's just say that we, we do have firsthand experience with younger people trying, uh, arcade games and pinball machines. And a lot of them don't even know how to play pinball. Like I, I'm dead serious. Like they don't know how to play pinball or they've never seen a pinball table. They don't know how to play arcade games. They don't understand. Like I've seen so many kids, younger kids, like I'm talking, you know, under, 14, 13, like walk up to a two player cabinet and like grab each, each joystick in each hand and try playing it that way. Like, no, dude, this isn't, this isn't a PlayStation controller. These aren't thumbsticks. Like it's, so I have, I would actually have to explain to these kids like how to play arcade games, but I think it's really cool because, you know, and I don't know if it's because they're going to talk about in this article from the guardian and they think it's because of TikTok, but I think it really kind of started maybe with stranger things. You know, you got the kids going to the arcade and playing arcade games. And, you know, there's this fascination with the eighties and nineties that these kids have. And, and, uh, I, I don't know. I just think it's really cool. So I think this is going to be another blow to AAA gaming because a lot of these kids might just go back to old games. Cause if, again, if there's a game that's 20 years old that you've never played before, it's new to you, right? And these publishers, they just keep releasing the same games over and over and over again, just with better graphics or whatever or some, you know. So why why do you need to support the modern AAA gaming space? If there's more out there than you can possibly play in a lifetime. I mean, I literally grew up in and around arcades. Uh, my uncle actually worked for a vending machine company, and I used to go with him when I was three years old. He used to take me with him in the truck and we would go around and get the quarters out of the arcade machines. I literally grew up around arcades, arcade machines, uh, coin ops and pinball tables. And he actually refurbished pinball tables for a while. So like for me, it's like I saw video, the beginning of video game history and I got to live pretty much the whole thing. But for these kids, there's like 30 years of history that you know, 40 years of history, 50 years, if you go, go back to the seventies, oh my God, that, that, that's new to them. So I think it's really cool. We're going to talk about this because I think there's definitely going to be a market for, uh, younger people playing older games too. It's not just disgruntled middle-aged gamers who are tired of all the, uh, politics and crap in AAA gaming or tired of all the microtransactions or all that. It's actually going to be Gen Z and possibly Gen Alpha. Too. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. If you want the audio edition of Clownfish TV, go out to any podcast app. We're there. Just look for Clownfish TV audio edition. And we also have another podcast. It's uh, called DRES, where we do more in-depth interviews with people. And we're going to get some more video game personalities on, I think. Um, but yeah, so I saw this. I saw this strip the other day. And I had to retweet it because this is 100% true. Uh, this is from Clueless Hero. Feeling old. Man, this game was my childhood. This dude's like, no way. It came out like three years ago. Ten, actually. What? I only played the remake, though. The original is like 16 years old. Stop. And he looks like he's just getting older. Such a classic. And now he's dead. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is how I feel about Kingdom Hearts fans. Like, I remember when Kingdom Hearts came out. But in my mind, it just came out like 10 years ago. But we're talking over 20 years. Somebody, somebody mentioned on Twitter the other day, they're like, Oh yeah, uh, we're going to get ready for the uh, 2050 anniversary of kingdom hearts. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? And to this day, nobody knows what the plot of that damn game is. 
Nobody knows what the plot of the game is, and it's been around for 25 years. I, I'm just saying. But yeah, this is true. You know, kids are going back and they're playing older games. And and they talked about, you know, in the other uh, the other video I did that, uh, you know, Minecraft is so incredibly popular. Minecraft came out before a lot of these kids were born. Can you believe that? Like, I remember when that was new. My kids played Minecraft when they were little. And it was new. It was like, oh, my God, isn't this cool? It's kind of like Legos, but as a video game. And before Microsoft bought it. And now it's like these kids grew up only playing Minecraft. But I think it's really cool that they're going back and looking at uh, retro games. So it's coming from uh, The Guardian, which is begging for money, you know, because but this this is a, a rare W for them. This article is pretty interesting. Why are younger generations embracing the retro game revival? Retro video games and aesthetics are having a moment, but it's not just Gen X and older millennials reliving their heyday. Younger millennials and Gen Z are getting in on the nostalgia, too. And again, not to go into too much detail, but I can tell you from firsthand experience is also Gen Alpha. Uh, younger kids, too, are like, yeah, I want to play the Pac-Man. How do you play Pac-Man? <laughs> they said on TikTok, retro gaming videos have amassed over 6 billion views. On YouTube, uploads have increased 1,000 fold. Spotify users are creating 50% more retro gaming themed playlists than they were at this time last year. And live streamers are cashing in on the repetitive catchphrases and mechanical movements of NPCs. So why in this age of hyper-realistic graphics and ever-expanding technology are younger generations captivated by an era of technological limitation? That, that might be it. You might have just answered the question. They said, uh, for Kingsley Ellis, a millennial raised on the bleeps and bloops of Mega Drives and N64... We were out of the bleeps and bloops by then. Just saying. The allure of retro gaming is simple. It's all about nostalgia. Uh, he has a TikTok account called Unpacked. It has 1.5 million followers. He says his interest lies mostly in old gaming hardware. His most watched videos revisit the glorious, bizarre, gloriously bizarre world of retro uh, peripherals. Those often ridiculous attachments designed to enhance or over-engineer the gaming experience. See Sega for an example of, of that. Some of the attachments I wasn't even aware of as a child blow my mind. Wow, they had a snorkel, a Game Boy controlled sewing machine. I did know about that one. I watch mostly, uh, you know, when I'm not watching news on YouTube, I watch mostly retro gaming channels. Uh, I would, I would actually recommend uh, GTV Japan is probably my all time favorite, and I, I want to give them a shout out. I, Somebody said he's from Pittsburgh, too. I don't know. I think he lives in Japan. But anyway, his channel is fantastic. And it's like watching what Electronic Gaming Monthly used to be. And uh, he doesn't get nearly enough love. He needs he needs more subs because um, his channel is awesome. I said the sentiment seems to resonate with a growing segment of Gen Z and Gen Alpha. The popularity of channels such as Ellis's reflect a broader fascination with retro tech that's evident in the rise of reaction videos, the resurgence of web web. Uh, 1.0 era Frutiger era aesthetics. Think what? Think futuristic optimism, glossy buttons, gradients, and Windows XP screensavers. A filter transforming people into PS2 characters, and the increasing adoption of Y2K era devices by young consumers. Last year, this is this I did know about this. Last year, Urban Outfitters sold out of refurbished iPod Minis, and a 20 year old Olympus digital camera was dubbed the hottest. Gen Z gadget. Uh, I think my kids bought an old low resolution digital camera off of TikTok or something or a replica of one. And it looked like a camera that I had like 25 years ago. Like, no, no, actually my, our first digital camera, I think my wife and I bought it together. It took floppy disks. I am not kidding. Three and a half inch floppy disks in this thing. It was ridiculous. You, you, I think I, I think it was a Canon. I can't remember. But yeah, it took floppy disks. That was our first digital camera. I was like, wow, these are fantastic low-res images. <laughs> um, yeah, they said that they're even sampling Golden Axe. Jay-Z's sampling Golden Axe. Golden Axe is probably my favorite arcade game of all time, by the way. I didn't know that. Um, let's see. NTS's monthly Ataku show dives into specific games or themes from iconic franchises such as Zelda to the history of video game sampling and rap. Interesting. So they're talking about how they're using video game samples in, in rap music now. And they're talking about Super Nintendo World, which is based more on the older games. By older, I mean, you know, GameCube era, <laughs> you know, which again, go see this strip 
for how I feel about that. Like, oh yeah, the new Mario games, you know, like Mario Sunshine. It's like, ah, shit, that game is really old. Plenty of artists and content creators are taking familiar retro game elements and spinning them into something new. On TikTok, the whistle sense of G-Funk inspired Grand Theft Auto uh, San Andreas theme and the whimsical Me Channel music. I know the Me Channel music is huge. The Wii music is huge. Like I'm, I'm listening to our kids, you know, they're on TikTok and I hear the Wii music in the background and I'm like, oh my God, but that, that was their childhood, right? They were really little when we got a Wii, but um, yeah, like that music uh, and they're doing dances and everything too. This is crazy. Yeah, so they're going back and playing Game Boy Advances. I think this is actually really cool. I think this is actually really cool. Plus, there's hope for guys like me that would rather play retro games on stream, which I have, by the way, if you go out to, well, not really retro, but retro-inspired games. If you go out to our Twitter, I was uh, messing around trying to stream a couple. One was like a GTA 1-themed game and uh, Vampire Survivors, which is you know basically 16-bit you know, Castlevania knockoff but also bullet hell. It's, it's fun. But, uh, yeah, we have a lot of games on our clownfish gaming channel that are retro. And I'm like, well, I'm an old man. Nobody's going to care about these. I'm like, no, that's what they want. I'm like, well, shit, man. I perfect, perfect timing. Yeah. They said that world of relentless technological advances and increasing AI anxiety, uh, Rivera wonders whether Gen Z's affinity for retro gaming is connected to its stability. It provides a constant. It's not going to morph into something else tomorrow. Given the continually disrupted times this generation has grown up in, it's not hard to see why younger players might find something comforting and unthreatening in pixelated graphics. Uh, The janky character animations of GTA or the ever-predictable NPC sound bites. I think that it, I think they want to experience and in a lot of cases with, I know younger people when they want to experience something that we did as kids. And I, you know, I, I, I keep forgetting how lucky I was to grow up in the eighties and nineties to see all this stuff firsthand, to see it happen when it was new. And I had a conversation last night with Jason Lennox, who's a, a comic book artist. We've known Jason for a long time. Um, he does the uh, convention scene here in Western Pennsylvania. And we were talking about how, wild it was to explain to people that like all these movies and TV shows that these kids are watching now, like we were there when they happened, we were there when they blew up. And, uh, you know, we we're just like, it's this record that just keeps skipping, right. It just keeps like playing the same thing over and over again. Like all the stuff that we grew up with is still around. And I think in a lot of ways, you know, I, I feel bad because it feels like this generation isn't getting their own unique pop culture. But at the same time, I think in a lot of ways, the eighties and nineties, we kind of peaked in new stuff. Right. And now we're just kind of like recompositing all that. And especially with AI, it's just like taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that and just smooshing it together. But it was a really cool time to grow up. Like every, every console generation was different. It was a significant leap in technology. And we went from like Pac-Man to doom in 15 years, less than 15 years. Pac-Man came out in what? 1980 and doom came out like 1993. So in 13 years, we went from Pac-Man to doom Pac-Man to the PlayStation one in about 14, 15 years, Pac-Man to the PS two in about 20 years, less than 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was crazy. Like every generation felt distinct. Now I really like to me, it feels like, okay, we peaked about Xbox 360 PS3 era. And now we're just doing the same thing just with better graphics. And with PCs, it's hard to tell. You know, a lot of the games that the kids are playing now are lower poly count games, games that aren't as graphics intensive. And I kind of wonder if it's just cause it's like, maybe it's just, harder to get invested in a game that's like super hyper realistic. And it's just the learning curve in a lot of cases is very, very high. I think people do want simpler games. Like you can just pick it up and go, you can pick up. I mean, it takes a lifetime to get good at Pac-Man, right? But you can just, everybody can understand Pac-Man. Everybody can basically understand among us 
lethal company games like that, you know, and it is a lot easier. It's a, a much simpler time, but I think we're, we're seeing a, a, a desire to go back to just kind of like a lot of younger people want to go back to vinyl and stuff. I think it's just the simplicity of it all. And I think maybe they're on to something. Maybe it's just like things are way too complicated. There's too much noise. And when I was a kid, it was fantastic. Like we just, we went to the arcade and we hoped that the games we played in the arcade would eventually come to the Nintendo. We knew they were going to be shit when they came to Nintendo, but maybe we'd get a Genesis version. It wouldn't be as bad. You know, then we used to fight over Genesis and Super Nintendo. And uh, then we made the jump to 3D. And that was a thing. It, was, it went from like Super Mario World to Mario 64. Like you have no idea. That was like the, the jump to VR. It was, it was huge. It was like, oh my God, Mario's in 3D. Oh my God. This is crazy. Oh my God, he's talking. Mario is talking. He's not saying much, but that's a, that was huge. You know, and kids today, like they, they will never experience that because everything is so good now. You're never going to experience that massive technological leap. I mean, the closest thing is how frightening AI is, and how good it's becoming. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. It says technology fixates on the latest and greatest retro gaming offers a refreshing break, perhaps a comforting idealization of simpler times. That's exactly what I think is going on. Same reason that kids were into knitting for a while, crocheting, I think. Uh, churn and butter. I don't know. But more than that, the games of the 80s and 90s are the foundation on which the gaming giants of today were built. Thank you. The music, the graphics, the dialogue, the clothes, it's the whole experience. There's a deeper cultural significance. It's a piece of history. Yes, gaming as we know it today began in the 80s and 90s. I, I would say probably more so than 90s with uh, PlayStation and N64, but basically 90s PC games 90s PlayStation games and N64 games, you know, they they all we're getting are better versions of those ideas. Like we're not getting a whole lot of really revolutionary concepts. Like I said, FPS started with Doom, you know, Doom and Quake and Unreal. And it just, you know, we just kind of just have a better version of that now. And that's, that's pretty much it. Like, it's just like, okay, well, let's make a more realistic first person shooter, you know, repeat, rinse and repeat, add more DLC or whatever. So Fortnite really is just kind of an evolutionary branch of these games that started in the nineties. And, uh, it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool and uh, good on these kids for wanting to go back in time. Cause it really was a great time to be a kid and a teenager. It really was. Things were a lot simpler back then. And I, I don't think it's just nostalgia goggles because I'm comparing my childhood to my kids childhood and I'm like we didn't have to be probably should have been but we have to be afraid as much you know it seems like in a lot of ways we didn't you know we were blissfully unaware of things we weren't constantly connected to social media like we are now we used to hang out at malls we had malls malls were cool that was basically our uh you know malls were our TikTok, right like we went there and that's where we we would connect with other kids our age and we go to the arcade, play games together, talk about stuff. It's just a very different time. And I miss it. I miss it. And I think a lot of kids today are looking at that and they're looking at idealized versions of it on, you know, in movies and TV shows. And it, it never was really quite that way, but, you know, it, it was a good time to be a kid. And, uh, I, you know, I, I feel very uh, blessed to have lived through that. And uh, even though I feel like an old man now, especially, you know, this is 100% true. Uh, it was a really cool time to grow up. And uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that they appreciate this. So I'm going to wrap this up. Um, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.